सो वी कंटिन्यू विद बुडोफेस्ट ब्लॉग्स आई एम संगीता वेंकटेश एंड अ वेरी वॉर्म नमस्ते एंड इफ यू हैव नॉट येट डन इट गो अहेड एंड स्मैश द सब्सक्राइब बटन बिकॉज दिस चैनल इज ऑल अबाउट ट्रेवल हिस्ट्री कल्चर टेम्पल्स एंड मच मोर आई एम श्योर यू कैन फाइंड इट क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग सो द फर्स्ट थिंग वी डिड डिसाइड टू डू इन बुडोफेस्ट वॉज टू विजिट द कासल डिस्ट्रिक्ट we did go there twice during the trip but you can do it in a day if you plan well so what you get to see there is the buddha castle also known as the royal palace or also known as the buddha vari palota in hungarian which i i hope i get the pronunciation correct and probably i will not attempt it again and this is home to a number of cultural institutions including two museums the national gallery and the budapest history museum you can of course after finishing the buddha castle you can visit the matthias church the fisherman's bastion and much more but if you're short on time i would recommend that you do these uh, three first so how can you get there remember the yellow trams that i spoke about in a previous video and my favorite tram number 2 so i will link that video in the description box but uh, and you can uh, if you're there you can catch that and get down at the yot was there the name i'll put it on the side which is close to the chain bridge or the sejani uh, landshed which is named after uh, istvan sejani who lived from 1791 to 1860 and he is considered to be one of the greatest political minds and a thinking architect of hungary he is known to have donated one year of his income in 1825 to establish the Hungarian Academy of Sciences and initiated the construction of the chain bridge the first bridge connecting Buda with Pest so what a visionary and we the world certainly needs more people like him in the same mold as uh, Szechenyi so what you see on the screen is the statue of Istvan Szechenyi that is located on the Roosevelt Square square which is just off the um, magnificent uh, chain bridge so the statue is the work of the sculptor joseph engel and the 2 meter uh, bronze statue uh, uh, you know it portrays the statesman in a military dress with a cloak and a sword extending a scroll with his right, right hand and below him are the four greek gods athena with a shield and hat poseidon with a trident demeter with a sheaf of wheat and zeus with a scepter and i may as well mention that on the southern side of the sechenyi is the one there is a statue of perenk dik the hungarian minister largely responsible for the compromise of 1867 which brought about the dual monarchy of austria and hungary so definitely hungary has a very a long and complicated history so after getting off the tram we cross the chain bridge on foot to reach the buda castle funicular connecting the banks of the river danube and the buda castle the funicular or the godavari cyclo in hungarian has been in service since 1870 it is a super short ride that connects you from the chain bridge to the castle district this was only the second funicular railway operating in europe and was a brainchild of odon chechenyi son of count istvan chechenyi well do you know which was the first if so leave me a comment in the chat Now this was destroyed during World War II and rebuilt again. With its 95 uh, meter track, the special train climbs a 50 meter incline and offers passengers breathtaking views of the city below. And what do you know? In 1987, the funicular was added to the UNESCO World Heritage list. The hours of operation are from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. You can also go up the hill via buses from the Dieg Ferenc stair, but why would you want to do that yes and there is also you there are an option to climb up the hill where also you do get good sights to see i believe so we reached the top and oh my god what magnificent views of budapest it is stunning even though it was cloudy and a, a bleak day and there it was the buda castle which stands as an enduring symbol of hungary's rich history and architectural prowess This iconic fortress also known as the Royal Palace or the Royal Castle has witnessed centuries of political upheavals cultural transformations and architectural evolution and this is what this video will focus on today and before i continue i would like to remind the viewers to please subscribe and watch till the end so the first castle was built in the 13th century 
when King Bela IV of Hungary built it to defend against uh, Mongol invasions. No trace of this castle remains and historians aren't even sure of its precise location. The foundations of today's castles, which would later, later be besieged no less than 31 times, were laid in the 14th century when King Lagos the Great built a castle in the Romanesque style, which was completed in 1356. Over the centuries, it underwent numerous reconstructions and expansions and renovations, reflecting the diverse ar architectural styles of the ruling dynasties, including Gothic, Renaissance, Baroque and Neoclassical. So we pass through the Habsburg Gate, which is an ornamental gate from the early 20th century and that separates the square from the former royal domain and palace. We then walk down what is called the Habsburg Steps towards a small terrace decorated with the fountain of the fishing children. The fountain was created in 1912 by Caroli Senye and shows children grasping a huge fish. To the southeast of Habsburg Step entrance, just in front of the royal palace, stands a statue of Eugene of Savoy, the Habsburg prince who wiped out the last Turkish army in Hungary at the Battle of Zenta in Serbia in 1697. Designed by Josef Rona, 200 years later, it is considered to be the finest equestrian uh, statue in Budapest. There were so many statues and the aesthetics vary, but I will run you through them very quickly. Among the many statues near the royal palace are two by the sculptor Miklos Ligeti in 1903, which represents characters from Zongor and Tunde, a play written in 1830 by Voros Marti Mihaly, the Hungarian poet and dramatist. Yes, you remember the station you saw in my last video that is named after him? If you don't remember, do go back to it. His five-act play was inspired by several works, including Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night's Dream and won a 200 Golden Prize from the newly established Hungarian Academy. Some consider Zongor and Tunde the finest Hungarian play of the 19th century. The paired bronzes flank the entrance to the Museum of the Fine Arts. Tunde is the female figure on the left in the peasant dress, leaning forward and holding an apple. Zongor, the male figure on the right, is in a, uh, is crouching over a sword and with a shield. So the statues were damaged in World War II and then uh, restored again. Now, uh, then of course there is the prominent statue of, uh, uh, you know, the, then you can see the Virgin Mary uh, statue that was erected just as recent as 2013 but you can see her only from the back as she is literally on the edge of the hill looking over the river Danube. The interesting thing about this statue is that Mary does not touch the child Jesus. She holds her hands only in front of her with a protective gesture and in this way the child floats in front of her mother's body underlying the concept of the Virgin Mary and the miracle of the birth of Jesus Christ. So as you walk around, you cannot miss the Matthias Fountain, which is an interesting set of sculptures. According to the legend, King Matthias Hunyadi, one of the most just kings of Hungary, went hunting in disguise. He was often disguised to see the true affairs of Hungarian kingdom. During the hunting, uh, hunting episode, he met a pretty peasant girl called uh, uh, Helen and she's known as Zep Ilonka in Hungarian. So they fell in love, uh, but when she eventually found out that he was king of Hungary, she realized that this love could never progress further because of the barriers in uh, class and, you know, and she died of a broken heart. So if you examine the fountain closely, you can see Zepp on it, uh, and on, on the right side tenderly petting a helpless baby deer while the hunters gaze in wonder. The most prominent character in this uh, entire tableau is of course King Matthias and uh, who is the youthful monarch who is victoriously surveying his realm while brandishing a lethal bow and arrow on the massive rock near the spring where he killed the deer. His three dogs arrive to cool off in the fresh spring water uh, and just like the dogs there are the huntsmen assistants who are you know look as if they are extremely vigilant and uh, with one of them poised to sound the horn 
So the serene figure who is seated on the left creates, uh, you know, symmetry in the fountain, and he represents the unbiased royal historian who writes the account of King Matthias without fear. And a little away uh, is the Lion's Gate, located near the Matthias Fountain that opens into the central courtyard of the Buddha Castle, known as the Lion's Courtyard. The four statues of lions that guard the entrance have inspired the name of the imposing gate. Uh, Janos Badrus, a Hungarian, Hungarian sculptor, produced these in 1901. And the allegorical statues of the winged victory, festoons and niches adorn the gate. And the monument is crowned with the Hungarian crest. So if you walk further to the side of the entrance of the lions, you can see this structure that is called the Kirali Lovarda or the Royal Riding Hall. Now the Royal Riding Hall is located in the uh, Tsiko's courtyard of the Royal Palace. During the reconstruction of the Royal Palace in the 19th century, a representative courtyard was designed for this area. Now the Riding Hall building was completed in 1900 and the new baroque building was built according to the plans of uh, the architect Alakyos Hausman. Now, during the World War II, the building was damaged and later had to be demolished. And the building seen today was completed as recently as uh, 2021 as a faithful replica of the original building. And this is what I really admire about uh, Hung Hungary is uh, that they, um, you know, uh, have really preserved their their architecture and also their uh, historical buildings. So in front of the building is a statue known as the Horse Herdsman statue and which is the work of the, uh, the uh, sculptor Georgi Vastago Sikosia and it depicts a horse wrangler with a, a stallion. So I have already mentioned about the, you know, the art gallery and all that. So if you uh, get time, you can go inside and um, you know there is also the changing of the guards in front of the Hungarian presidential palace which is an attraction uh, when you go at, to the Buddha castle. Now the palace is called Sandor Palota or the Alexander Palace and we saw a ceremony just as we arrived in the morning and another one before we left the Buddha castle premises. So the presidential guard soldiers actually work in shifts of one hour each in front of the Alexander Palace, which means new guards begin their shifts hourly. So it so if you go there, you're bound to see at least one changing of the guards. So and I will leave you to watch that. Uh, and in the next vlog, it will be all about the Matthias Church and the Fisherman's Bastion on the castle's hill. So stay tuned and bye for now.